بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأزلفت الجنة للمتقين غير بعيد هذا ما توعدون لكل أواب حفيظ من خشي الرحمن بالغيب وجاء ادخلوها بسلام ذلك يوم الخلود لهم ما يشاءون فيها ولدينا مزيد وكم اهلكنا قبلهم من قرن هم اشد منهم بطشا فنقبوا فنقبوا في البلاد هل من إن في ذلك لذكرى لمن كان له قلب أو ألقى السمع وهو شهيد ولقد خلقنا السماوات والأرض وما بينهما في ستة أيام وما مسنا من لغوب فاصبر على ما يقولون وسبح بحمد ربك قبل طلوع الشمس وقبل الغروب ومن الليل فسبحه وأدبار السجود واستمع يوم ينادي المناد من مكان قريب يوم يسمعون الصيحة بالحق ذلك يوم يوم يسمعون الصيحة بالحق ذلك يوم الخروج إنا نحن نحيي ونميت وإلينا المصير يوم تشقق الأرض عنهم سراعا ذلك حشر علينا يسير نحن أعلم بما يقولون وما فذكر بالقرآن من يخاف وعيد صدق الله العظيم ما شاء الله تكبير الله أكبر There are some competitions we have some uh, uh, junior imams in here ما شاء الله So may Allah سبحانه وتعالى bless you بارك الله فيكم and uh, we start right away So again do we need more chairs if you need more chairs we can get some more إن شاء الله I just want everybody to be comfortable. I will continue, inshallah, with the value that I was talking about in the khutbah, and hopefully we can get some input from everybody as far as keeping the promise. Keeping the promise. Part of our Islam, of our religion, is to keep the promise. Keep your promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep your promise. Any word that you uh, say that involves any kind of commitment, you need to stand up to it. You need to uh, fulfill it. And that's a lesson that we learned from the Prophet Sallallahu first thing. Him and his wife, he would love us say that Khadija, more than any kind of love that you watch in the movies, the romantic love, the nice words, the beautiful things, he would do it Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam not only in her life, after her death, she passed away years and years. Every time he is having anything that he is enjoying, they would slaughter a, ca a, a cow, a uh, cow, a goat or something, he will send some meat to uh, X, Y, Z of the people. And he said, Innaha, innahunna, these used to be the friends of Khadija. He remembers his wife, radiallahu anha, keeping the, this commitment to her, this love with her, with that loyalty that is in there, even to that kind of romantic, you know, affection and love. Uh, and, and it involve, literally involves everything in our life. If you, Ahmed, you are here, Khadija. You are here, not here. You're you supposed to be here. Thank you. So, one of the things that, little things that we could, it causes a lot of problems. If somebody says a word to you, and then he moves away, that becomes automatically an amana. How many times, friends, 
you know, talk is going on. And you know what did he say? You know what did she say? And we go ahead and we talk about things that happened or somebody said in one session. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, once this is happening, whether it is secret, I'm telling you a secret, or I'm just talking with this closed group, in this closed group, then you move on. It is a tamana, it is a ahd. That's the hadith of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We are facing a lot of problems. You tell me from your own life, from your own life, and I wanna, I'm not interested in details, but did it happen to you recently that you came to know that somebody, you know, said some words that, you're, that we, he was not supposed to say, like he, he said that you said something and that words, when it's spread, it causes problems. Did it happen to you recently? Some gossip about you, some words, whether it happens or not. It does not happen to anybody of you recently, Perfect community, mashallah. Perfect community. <laughs> Did it happen to you recently, brother? Yes, yes, yes. Come on. Come on. It happened to Trump. To who? Trump. Trump? Yes. How come? <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, that was a man I mean, right? Well, we have to talk about this concept a little bit more. No, we're talking about private things, things that I, I entrust you with, and then it's everywhere in the community. Does it happen to you? It does, right? I know. Yeah. Those are, those guys are honest. Those guys are honest, right? You are talking. Sammy is talking to Huda. Huda is talking to Lena. It is supposed to stay there. Don't go elsewhere and say, you know, da, 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 da. this is what happened. Gossip. No, don't do it. It's sir. It's secret. It's a man. That trust. Otherwise, we have those kind of uh, uh, diseases and sicknesses and problems and troubles and what have you. Especially between husband and wife. Talking about different level now. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if, you know, in the A'adham, one of the greatest sins is a man. He gives to his wife, his wife gives to him, and then they go outside, they talk about secrets. They're not supposed to, you're not supposed to do that. And let's teach our kids this. It happens to me and you and anybody who's dealing with kids. Out of innocence, I personally come to know, don't panic, okay? I come to know about little things that they, it's not, I'm not supposed to get to know about. Little kid, kids with their aunt innocence, they say, oh yeah, this is what mom, my mom does. This is what, no, let's teach our kids that, you know what, you see something, we have some family issues, we have some circles, that what we talk about in here, it's not supposed to go outside. It is an important value that we need to keep. Let's take it to a different level, the level of work, workplaces. There are some secrets you get into when you are hired to work in a certain place, you know, that you're not supposed to take it outside. Is that happening? If it is happening, know that this is part of our religion, not only contracts, it is. Our religion is telling us to keep those kind of secrets or those kinds of uh, private matters because it is part of the Ahd and the Amen. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us in one hadith that the first thing, one of the signs of the Day of Judgment, the end of time, that many things, many good things will start disappearing and many bad things will start appearing. Do, does anybody know which is, what is the first thing ever to disappear from the good things? When it is towards the end of the time, one value will be taken up. Turfa. Al Aman. The Aman. Would be the first thing to be taken out. Until or unless until people will sell, exchange, and do bargains and, and, and transactions, and there is no trace of a man. Yeah, there is no there is no one to talk about a man because it's not there. Well, a man. It's there's no trust nowadays. You get to any contract, you see words, uh, uh, pages and pages and pages and pages and pages of commitments that you need to be committed. That's what it happens. When it in the past there was just one word. It is just one word. If you talk to some people, I sometimes talk to people who are 70 and 80 and 90, and then maybe, I, mean, I don't want to mention any ages, but all the people back in the days, and just by the word, you, you say the word, you're committed to it. Nowadays, pages, several pages of commitment just to get this person to be committed, and hopefully they will work. It is part of our Islam, Ahlul Islam, Ahlul Aman. Muslims are people of trust. They are trustworthy. The people once they were accusing the Prophet, you're lying, you're lying. 
You do not trust me when the one in the sky, when Allah, the one in the heaven and the sky, is trusting me. He is an Amin, one of his names, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or, or uh, attributes he was known for, is al amana The Prophet said, Addi al amanata ila man intamana. Ta'ala Abdullah. Listen to this. Come on. I was doing the chairs. Jazakallah khair. Sorry. Addi al amanata do the amana, do the trust to the people who trust you. Wala taqum man khani. What if somebody is betraying me, is doing me wrong, they disclose my secrets, they play nasty with me. Do I do the same to them? No. The Prophet said, be trustworthy and be good to those, to everybody, even if somebody betrays you. Dean, get in please. Get inside here. Let's come inside here. Come on inside here please. Yes, I mean you guys. Come on. This is the way I'm going to use. Come inside. Mahmoud, inside please. Yes, come in. Mahmoud. So, it's not only with the good people, with the good friends, the nice friends. This is going to be natural. That you be nice to those who are nice to you. That's natural. But it is to be done by Muslims for the sake of Allah, with those who respect me, with those who do not respect me. I go with principles as Muslims that I am supposed to keep all the time. One of the few examples that we become astaghfirullah as Muslims known for. You promise somebody that you will meet him somewhere at a certain time. You show up, you probably not show up at all, or you know, you come like a half an hour later, two hours later, for no excuse. Sometimes you might have excuses and we let each other know, we let the other person know. But is that, is that there? Is it there that we not really are punctual as far as signs and stuff? Is it there? Yes. Is it in here? It is. But it's not in Islam. Islam is teaching us the opposite. The op one of the values of Islam is you promise it's going to be one of the signs. Excuse me, I would say it. I would say it as a man from the problem. One of the signs of what? <laughs> Nifaq, hypocrisy. Is when you, when you speak, you lie. Somebody does, does not make him a liar. Uh, Munafiq right away, but one of the signs of the Saul in the Fah. It is one, it is something that is done only by Munafiqeen. And one of them is a wa'ad al He promises, he breaks his promise. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He would urge Muslims to keep their promises even to little ones, to kids. And we know in several hadith, in one hadith he said to this lady who, were, who was trying to lure his child to come, going far away, come, I give you this. I give, she promised to give him something. And then Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, are you planning to give him something? She said, yes, I'm gonna give him tamra, a date, which is candy. Obviously no relationship whatsoever between the tamra, the dry date, and the candy. One is food, the other is trash. That is, that is what it is. But anyway, she promised to give him that good kind of candy. And she, she did give him. And then Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you, if you were planning not to give him the candy or the, 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 the date, that would have been, uh, yani, that would have been counting as a, as a lie against you. As a lie against you. Keep your promises even for the young ones. Don't make a lot of promises. If you do that, I give you, and then you never give them. What are we teaching them? We're teaching them that it's okay. You can, you can break your promise easy because I do it. So again, we could be guilty. I'm not, when I say all of these things, it does not mean I'm perfect in it. My son is looking at me, right? So, I'm not perfect in any sense, but I'm trying to, yeah, I mean, to, all of us, inshallah, will be uh, up to that, inshallah. Any conditions in there, you got into a contract, there are some conditions, you got to be up to it. Any commitment, somebody promised and he said, will you do that, brother, such and such? Yes, I will do it. And he doesn't show up to do it. This is a commitment, you break your promise. You break your promise, you did not show up as you, if you cannot take the commitment, do not take it. In the first place, do not take it. Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu, the Sahabi, the friend of the Prophet, he once said, Ya Rasulullah, he requested something. What did he request? What did he request? He requested the Jazakallah the Prophet to make him a leader. Can you give me this leadership of this town, of this city or something? He said, no, it is Amman. And it is too much for you. I know you, you cannot. Abu Dhar is so good of a person, but that's going to be Amman that the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knew he's not going to be up to it. To the end of the hadith. So we should really make sure that when we 
يعني get, put our, our commitment into something that we are capable of doing it. And then let's do it as promised because this is part of our MNN. I'll give you a beautiful story that's mentioned in Sayyid Bukhari and Kulbay. Does anybody has anything to participate with? Any story as far as keeping the promises? And uh, yes. See? Is that reality? When you say inshallah, what does inshallah in the today's sense mean? In our sense? <laughs> Never. It's not going to happen. What are we doing to our deen? To our terms? What are we doing to the terms of our religion? Inshallah. Inshallah. Inshallah means bil Tell that to you. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> now, I, know, I said, I said in the pudding, okay? Okay, I said that I'm guilty. I'm guilty of a lot of these things, right? And I, you, you, are, you, are, you are tit for tat now because of what I did for you in the chutbah, I'm still hurting, right? <laughs> so, yeah, let's work together, inshallah, to change that concept of inshallah, meaning inshallah, and I will do it, not just because now you're, you're associating the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the will of Allah with something else. Let me, yes. When you say inshallah, it doesn't mean uh, guaranteed to do it, but if Allah will do it. And there is possibility you will be able to do it or not. But Inshallah. that's me, I'll <laughs> Yes, exactly. That's what it prepares to. But again, I just asked the question, and the kids all, because of what I, we do, we made it like, insha no, don't say inshallah. Say, I will do it. So, see what I'm, what I'm trying to say? You can't we say, do. I will do it. You say inshallah as in yourself and being, you know, especially when you promise to do it. When you promise to do something, don't just say inshallah in the sense of no, it's not going to be done because that is what we are conveying to all the kids. I think the wrong concept for us is to say inshallah, meaning if God wills, He wants me to, He will force me to do it. I may not want to do it, but you know. I like, I like Muslim. <laughs> like Allah. So let's just use things that we mean and yeah, I mean, uh, really double check on, on the words that we say, promises that we make that sometimes we do not make because it is one of the bad, important, very important values of Islam. Hold on. Don't say anything about me, Allah. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. We say, what does inshallah mean? If Allah wills. God willing, if Allah wills, inshallah, this is going to happen. But many times we use this good word to say it's never going to happen. So that's what I'm trying to yeah, you say in here. We have to use it, exactly. Let's not do it this way. Uh, the story that I want to conclude with, and feel free if anybody has anything to share, is a story that mentions Sahih al Bukhari for somebody who kept his promise and he took it to the extreme. He took it to something that one level that we probably, it's hard for us to understand, but it was there. It was two people from Bani Israel, previous nation, Nabi Sallallahu as narrated by Abu Hurairah, is telling us this hadith. Two men, one of them he needed to borrow money from the other person. He borrowed a thousand dinar, you could say a thousand dollars, actually it's much more than a thousand dollars, because the dinar was the golden dinar, a coin, golden coin. But anyways, let's say a thousand dollars, a thousand dinar from that person. And he said, the lender, he said, let's, you know, let's bring some witnesses. He said, Katha billahi shaheed. The person who is borrowing the money, he said, Allah is our witness and he is enough and sufficient as a witness. He said, yes. Like if he is saying Allah is my witness and you go, that is a level of faith and iman that they had. It does not mean in any sense that you go nowadays and don't bring witnesses. No, we are on a different level now. Right? But he said, bring me a kafir. At least if no shaheed, if no, if no witnesses will be there to know that I'm giving you this thousand dinars, maybe one can feel somebody to guarantee that you will pay me back. Otherwise, if you do not pay, I will go to that kafir. What is kafir? Do, do we have a very close word of your Guarantor. Guarantor? Guarantor is something else. But it's somebody to grant you, to, you know, to make the man, like I, if I default on the, in the, in the debt, maybe Brother Abdullah will be my kafir, he will pay off my debt. Guarantor. 
guarantor, okay. So a guarantor, he said, it's many guarantor. He said, no, uh, it is uh, Allah, he said, Allah is my kafir. He said, Salah. He said, you have told the truth, I take it from you. Allah is my kafir. He gave him a thousand dinars, obviously no human witnesses, no uh, guarantor. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the shaheed and is the kafir. Then he had to leave, the, there was a sea between both of them. He got the money and he left overseas. Obviously, I'm guessing it was like probably a, maybe a lake or maybe a river or something, but it was a bahr. Bahr is just a sea in Arabic. And he left. They agreed that at certain specific time and place, this man will come. This time was about to come and the man was trying to find a ship to sail back for that person to pay him off at the exact time that they agreed on. He, the, the weather was so rough and the seas were, were rough and he was not able to find, there was no, obviously no uh, ship or no boat was taken off at this time. Uh, so he had to wait and obviously it's probably, he never know that when it's gonna clear off. So he thought of something, he got a khashaban, a piece of wood, big piece of wood, and he craved it somehow and he put the, the thousand dinar in, in there, what as a jah means, he made sure it is completely locked so the water would not get to the money. And he said, Ya Allah, you are my shaheed, you are my witness. You were there, you saw everything. I chose you as a sufficient and as enough shaheed witness for me and as kafir grantor for me. And now it is time to give it back. I don't want to break my promise to this man being at this time and this place. And he put it in this wood and he threw it into the sea and he said, Ya Allah, take care of it. The other man was waiting for him on the other bank, on the other side, and he said, waiting for him, hours, hours and hours, no, no, nobody is coming. So, as he was about to leave, he saw this wood coming ashore, and he thought, well, at least let me take this wood, so it would be like a firewood for my family, because I didn't get anything today. He got the wood and left, and you can imagine, as he was, you know, cutting it, he got the the money and actually the man put a letter to it. He put a letter that this money is from such and such and he put it in there. He found it. A miracle, kind of miracle, but that's what happened. It's very authentic money. And then he was happy and everything. This man, the other man, was still looking for a boat because he did it and yes, he had trust in Allah, but he had to make sure that the money get, get to that person. He got another thousand and he was waiting for the, it was a few days later when the, the everything cleared up and he had to travel to that person and he came all the way to him and he said, this is a thousand dinar, dinar that I borrowed from you. He said, well, did you send anything? Did you send me anything? He said, I'm telling you that this is the first boat that was sailing ever since like a week or something. He said, but the one that you took as shaheed, as witness, and the one that you took as grand tour, kafir, he, at the anka, he is already, you know, he paid off on your behalf, I got your money and I got the, the, the letter and Jazakallah khairan take the thousand dinar and go back. So the, the moral in this is subhanAllah, look at both of them. The, one person is, has full trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, obviously do not go if you have any debt for somebody in Canada or somebody in China, do not go put the money and throw it in the water. Your level of Iman is Allah wa'ala, <laughs> but I'm not gonna do that. I trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that's what happened. Look at the, the amana of the other person. He could have easily. Imagine this is something who lives in the United States or anywhere in the world, in Mecca. Anywhere in the world, in 2017. Illa I'm not just making a sweeping. Imagine it happens to somebody nowadays. He gets his thousand dinar in this way and he found it. And then the other person is trying to come to him and give him another thousand. What would he say? Sure, yes, thank you, Zakallah, man. I will take it. But no, he said, no, I got the thousand dinars and it is done. This is the amana, this is the level that we need to get back to. The Sahaba were trusting one another. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there was this level of trust back in the days, up until recently. We need to bring this level of trust back, inshallah. A couple of points and we conclude before moving on to the next, uh, the next uh, section, inshallah. Go there, quickly. Why does the man? He didn't take it. He said, I got my thousand dinars. 
that you sent in the wood. And oh, he was he was a businessman and uh, he needed to borrow some to, to do some uh, business. That's not mentioned in the hadith, anyway, but he was a businessman. <laughs> yes. Let's not block the door, inshallah. If I may have the brothers and the boys coming this way, look. One, two, three, four, five empty chairs in here. Okay. This is for uh, the boys and, and for the you know, boys and girls and adults. Sometimes, uh, like uh, when you use vending machines or anything that you know requires putting money, of course, you could lose money and may Allah you know, replace it for you and you can go and report it. So, it's but sometimes you, you get, uh, one time it happened to, to, to us and, and we, we need to, this is also a manner, this is, you should, this is not your money. If you get extra money or the person giving you a, a cha you know, the change, uh, you give $20 and they give you more than $20 by mistake, you should not take it. You should go and say like, this is not my money, this is, you gave me this by mistake. But also, uh, so, so this is very important for the youth and for us, I guess, the adults, that you should not cheat, even if nobody is watching you. Uh, whether you, some people say, oh, we are in a non-Muslim country. No. Whether you are you know, dealing with Muslims or non-Muslims, we still deal fairly and, and with, with, you know, uh, do the aman. Just a question for Sheikh, like, when we are talking, you and I, about something, and uh, after I go, I said, well, Sheikh, I'm going say it. It's like opinion or something. Not everything we say is a man. Is that true? Or? When, when it is expected, when it is one-on-one -on -one talk, and I am expecting you not, not to disclose it, especially if I say do not disclose that, that is the level. But it's we're not talking about public things. Mr. Trump and what he says, <laughs> you can talk about this there. So I don't want to say these jokes. You see Trudeau when he was extending his hand and he doesn't want to, to even give him salam. Did you see that? You know why? Think about it. <laughs> yes? Is, is there any exception to this rule? Any exception to the rule that if somebody tells you a secret, you're supposed to keep it. But there is a certain condition where you have to tell the truth or something like that, especially in case of marriage. Like if somebody is going to get married. Right. I'm talking about the 95 to probably 99% of the secret talks that we are having between us. Just general, you know, talks that we are not expecting a sister is talking to another sister, not expecting her to go and let all the sisters know. This is a man. A brother is talking to a brother, something related, per personal, private, not expecting them to disclose. But in some cases, always there are exceptions. There are criminal things. Any criminal thing you got to know, you're not supposed to keep it. You have to, you have to disclose it. This is a secret. No, it's not a secret. You have to. You know, keep the, you know, there are higher uh, interests that we need to look at. But I'm talking about the general things, that, you know what he said, you know what she said. We ended up, you know, having husband and wife fighting, friends fighting, relations being severed and cut for just not keeping the amen. It can go on and on and on and on. Brother Zakir, inshallah, is going to be the last one. And we... The other side of it is that if you keep the amen, not only that it is, uh, it, you know, you're not putting in a sin, but it's also probably a huge reward for keeping it. Right, it's, it's just, it has to do with, with our own nature. A nature of somebody who cannot, imagine somebody who cannot just keep, not only the secret of others. Imam Shafi'i, what did he say? He said, If you have a secret for your own, if you have a family issue, if you have something private, don't even share it with the closest friends. Because the minute that you share it with somebody, with somebody, you were not able to keep it within your chest. You were not. Your chest was not enough to keep it as a secret for those things that needs to be kept. And you tell it to somebody. Then what do you expect him to do? It's going to be you know, harder for him to keep it. That's not to say don't trust the closest people, but I was talking about things that you, uh, you know. By this, inshallah, we come to the end of this section, and I would ask the sisters, inshallah, to...